<clears throat> Our next paper is entitled Endoscopic Revision of Gastric Bypass, Holy Grail or Epic Fail. Presenter, Alberto Gallo, MD. <clears throat> this comes from University of California at San Diego. I want to thank Seychelles for letting us present our work. Uh, we have nothing to disclose. Uh, talking a little bit about the background, approximately 20 or 30 percent of the patients who undergo bariatric surgery will either not meet the goals for weight loss surgery or will experience weight regain. Multiple factors have been uh, proposed to this, including uh, anato anatomic anatomical anormalities and patient compliance. Revisional surgery by open and laparoscopic means is associated with higher morbidity and mortality, and long-term results in terms of weight loss have been inconsistent. Endoscopic application has been seen as a less invasive option with encouraging initial results. So uh, the objective of our study was to analyze the outcomes after rows, restorative obesity surgery and the luminal. So we retrospectively analyzed patients that underwent Rose procedure between May 2008 and November 2013 at our institution. All patients have failure or weight loss or regain weight after going white gastric bypass. The demographics, times in primary, primary procedure, operative data, and follow-up were recorded. A total of 27 patients underwent, underwent Rose procedure. One patient was excluded from the analysis due to lack of postoperative follow-up. There were 25 females in our study. The average age was 49 years old. The average initial BMI was 40, and the average time since ruin white gastric bypass was 12 years. The mean OR time was 77 minutes. Blood loss was minimal. On average, uh, four stitches were placed. The pouch size, uh, the initial pouch size was 6.8 centimeters and went down to 3.3 centimeter, that's a 50% reduction uh, from baseline. And uh, the stomach size was, the average was 2.1 centimeters and went down to 0.8, that's a 61% reduction. A total of 12 patients and seven patients underwent follow-up EGD and three at 12 months. And we can see that at three months, uh, the pouch size is, was, the average was five centimeters, that's, that's a, 26.5% uh, reduction comparing to baseline, and the stomach size was one point, average size was 1.2 centimeters. That's a 43% uh, reduction comparing with baseline. At 12 months, the pouch size was 6.1 centimeters, and that's only a 10% reduction from baseline, and the stomach was 2.2, and that's a 5% increase comparing to baseline. This uh, graph show in black the percent of the patients on follow-up. The blue is the BMI and the excess weight loss is shown in green. And we see during the first two years, the percent of excess weight loss is between eight and 10. And during that time, we see that there's a significant decrease on the uh, percentage of patients on follow-up, then that being 60% uh, at the two-year mark. After that, we have only four patients uh, uh, on follow-up and uh, we see that uh, that accounts for 30% uh, of compliance with follow-up, and it seems that uh, the data for the weight loss uh, seems to, the benefit of the procedure seems to fade after the two years. This is, there are the two graphs uh, in comparison, so we can see that when the pouch and the stomach size uh, are reduced, then patients uh, seem to be losing weight, and then when they return to baseline level, uh, that benefit uh, is lost. But let's analyze this data in another way, and uh, I wanna show with the amount, with percentage of patients lose weight after the procedure. And we see that at the two-year mark, we have 60% of the patients that lost weight. And after that, uh, it remains 50%. Uh, uh, In green, I'm showing the percentage of patients that lost uh, more than 10% excess weight loss. And we see that during the first two years, it's approximately 40 to 60%. And then with less data and less patient follow-up, this uh, level becomes inconsistent. And this just showing them the percentage of patients that gain weight, and it's the opposite to the ones that lost. So in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, although endoscopic uh, application achieved the intended reduction of the pouch and stomach diameter at three months, 
this tend toward the preoperative diameter at 12 months. This anatomical shift may explain why in those who follow tended to regain initial loss weight. So long-term follow-up was poor, and it, it, it is difficult to make any definite conclusion. So is this the holy grail or epic fail? So if we have taken into consideration the first two years and the, sh the short-term result, we probably have said that it was the holy grail. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it seems that the benefits of the procedures on the patients who follow seem to fade within the first two years, although uh, at the last follow-up, we have 50% of the patients that were losing weight. So as an as a end, a revisional bariatric surgery remains a complex uh, problem, and uh, opportunities such as repeat endoscopic intervention may, may help improve this initial success. Uh, it's impossible for me to say it is uh, uh, became, so, sorry, it's impossible for me uh, to say if this uh, a holy grail or if it will become uh, an epic fail. Thank you. Papers open for questions. Yes, yes uh, Mohammed Dahman from Cincinnati. First of all, I want to really commend you on uh, your honesty presenting this data. Unfortunately, you know we see that. There is no leak rates, there's no complications, everything, all the outcomes are great. I was starting to say you're gonna quit. So I think that's a very good point that you bring up here is revisional surgery. And I think Dr. Schirmer was uh, giving a talk, uh, I think yesterday or the day before, he was saying, I think it's very important when we pick the patients for revision, is we have to ask the question is, is it patient failed the surgery or the surgery failed the patient? And the reason I'm bringing this up is with a lot of those surgeries and the revision of surgery was offering, and then we don't see the outcome we want, actually we're having more negative image out there among other provider physician, PCPs, and even patients about the prospect of that this surgery does really help and does work, but the problem is how much aggressive do we do, go with all those revision of surgeries. So, but I just wanted to actually commend you for sharing this uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you, and I agree, these patients already fail uh, gastric bypass, and uh, there's, we don't think there's that many options out there. These patients uh, may or may not lose weight, and it's difficult to choose which ones will do well and which ones will not, and we really don't know uh, if a lot of patients stop coming because they keep losing weight, or uh, they stop coming because they are frustrated that they are not, not losing weight. So that's a... Uh, I would, uh, okay, uh, let, let me ask this question. So, from my reading of your data, from viewing your data, you've very conclusively shown that you can endoscopically close the stoma, reduce the size of the pouch at three months, but it fails long term. Why did it fail long term? And at three months, you're showing weight loss. So those patients had greater restriction, greater, you know, better satiety, were able to lose some uh, weight. So you've shown proof of concept, but your problem is that you have back to the previous size of the stoma and the pouch at 12 months. Why did that occur? When we see that all the anchors, like almost all the anchors were in, in place at 12 months, but the, the pouch is somehow stretches. We don't know if like, these patients at the beginning start losing weight because they are engaged with the program and they are engaged with the uh, dietary restrictions and then the more they are out of the surgery, they start, they start like, doing the same thing that they were doing when they start gaining weight. Do you think there's a technical issue with the way you're doing the suturing and everything else that allows it to re-expand? And we, and that was, that's a great question, but that's why we went back and see if, if the anchors were in place. Everything was, is in place, but this, the stomach and the pouch stretches. And that's why we said okay. probably it would be a good thing uh, to revise this patient after one or two years. And if the pouch is big and the stomach is big, then just another, do another endoscopic intervention. Okay. Dr. Fielding. Dr. Fielding from New York. Just a small comment before we finish. Apropos the previous gentleman's comment over here, this is the first time anyone's ever shown 
that, operative fa that patients' weight regain is directly related to that stoma and thing getting bigger. These patients haven't failed the operation. The operation has failed the operation. And it's a direct correlation between that stoma size and people getting fat again. And I think it's powerful to show this, that weight regain is often due to operation failure, not patient weakness. And I think it's an important observation. Yeah, yeah uh, that, that was seen and it was uh, published in, with Thompson's study. He, he correlated that, the pouch. Unfortunately, for us, there was no correlation, but it was probably due to the sample size of our patient because a lot of patients had, had like uh, endoscopy, not a lot of patients had endoscopy at the year follow up. But to be, fair to, to be fair, at the end of your series, your stoma and pouch size were the same as when you began. Yeah. Right. Yes. Dan Connum, Salt Lake City. Um, I was always um, taken with Dana Portnier's paper, how they could show when gi what gastric bypass patients were to do. They could predict failure or success at three months following gastric bypass surgery. Um, I didn't hear how long that you were, before you're waiting to do the intervention, and might the problem be that you're waiting too long to do the intervention, it should be done much, much, much sooner if you can predict failure by three months um, on a gastric bypass. Yeah, and that's also a great comment because uh, the other study that said that if you uh, intervene five years or at least into the five year uh, time frame, then you may be able to do better. Our patients were most of them after five years. And yeah, we, we probably should try, or there should be other studies that trying with patients that have a failure uh, of the bypass like sooner. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Thank you.